Good evening and welcome, friends. Got a shadow across there. Sorry, I'm not sure I can do anything about that. Uh, let me show you what we're doing tonight. Got a chair in my way here. Today I was out painting and there was a persimmon tree. above the one gal's head. And so I reached up and pulled a little branch off. <laughs> um, the ones dropping on the ground were pretty far gone. As you can see, I put them into water tubes, which is a good idea for you if you like to work with uh, cut flowers or, or anything like this. Um, it makes them last, obviously, a little longer. So over the years, I've saved a, a bunch of water tubes. And yeah, hopefully it will make my leaves hold up a little bit longer because I've got a light on it. But I put it down below me where I'm going to look over top of it. We're going to do a five by seven and I'm going to look through my view catcher. I want to get those three fruits in and some of the leaves. But you can see I've got some nice shadows. I want to bring your eye in with the stem. So you can see I've been playing with it. I've been cutting stuff and moving leaves around. Sometimes that's the trickiest part just to, you know, figure out how to set things up. Some people spend an awful lot of time setting up still life, so. All right, I want you to have a good view, but I kind of need you out of my way. So get out of my way. <laughs> All right, I think this will work. Again, this is a five by seven that I've toned, and I looked through the view catcher over and over, trying to decide what looked better. I felt like horizontal looked better. And again, I want to get the stem in there and lead your eye in. I want to get all three of those little persimmons in there. So, it's going to be tricky. Try to get the sketch on and, uh, all right, so let's get a brush. It's a somewhat smaller brush and we'll mix some um, ultramarine and transparent red oxide. Those are the darks that I like. A little solvent, thin it down. All right, now I'm going to look through this and see if I can get things set up where I want. Okay, I don't want to bring you in directly off the corner. So we're going to come in above, above the corner. Try not to, you know, bring things out right at a corner either. It's just another rule, you know, for composition. Okay, and if we do that, one f one's about in here. And it looks like this is going to go almost all the way across. And this one actually right across this fruit. I don't know much about, I don't think I've ever painted persimmons and don't know much about them and, you know, they got that little fuzzy thing on top. We were down in Florida one winter on vacation and I uh, wanted to paint something, so it's interesting down there. I just went out in the yard and I found a grapefruit and I found some, I think they were kumquats and uh, made a cute little still life out of those things. All right, I'm looking, get back into position. And we got a leaf that's running off the edge down here. This is tricky. Yeah, we painted at a uh, organic farm today. wonderful place. I got some nice reference photos too. That's always part of the fun of going out someplace. You get good reference photos to work from too. You know, and hopefully this feels like enough, you know, that it doesn't feel... I got, you know, I got shadows too. That was another thing I did. I put some thought into where the light was gone. I 
I painted this Sunday outside at a um, event we have called Handmade Market, and uh, walked around and tried to, you know, it was lots of tents, typical outside fair, but I um, painted a uh, couple food trucks. I focused mostly on this ice cream truck that was there. I'm blocking in the leaves and the shadow. Hmm. Okay, well, let me look at that again. I feel like I've made this. You know, not that I have to get exactly what I see here. I don't. But, uh, Probably the fruits themselves will probably keep that area. Um, clean, you know. Get our little scraper out and we'll uh, make sure these areas where the, the persimmons, right? Did I? I don't know. You know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work and uh, I will wipe it off. So I'm going to uh, pre mix some colors. Of course, we have green leaves, and um, these little guys, I think it depending on what stage of ripeness they're in, they, two of them look green, and one of them is more of a kind of a peachy color, which is nice. So, and as I look at them, I would say they're kind of a cooler green. So, let's mix up a cooler green and see how that looks which I'll take my coolest blue and my coolest yellow and some white to lighten and we'll see how that looks that feels too cool to me so we're going to put some of our warm yellow in there you know and I like everything you know, there's darker and lighter areas, so I think, now are there any, yeah, there's a few little highlights on them too. So I'm going to make I think three values in the green. I've said that before, but three values is a good place to start. And the other one, you know, just seems to have kind of a rosy color wash over top of it more than anything, so. I'm kind of making an orange for that. I'm going to have to squint to um, try to get the values right on them. really makes a difference. So I'm going, again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm going for a three values in my uh, orangier mixtures here too for that one. 
All right, the leaves, I mean, I don't have to pre-mix anything for them. I like my transparent green, which is ultramarine and in any yellow. It's a very dark transparent green. I think that works really well for um, the darkest part of the leaves. And into that mixture, we can mix uh, some of our cad yellow medium. And if you want to pull a little lighter, you can do some white, but you want to keep it warm enough. So you could pull some white into it and then maybe a little more yellow to pull it, warm it back up. All right, so I have some values. I have some pre-mixed colors. I think I'll maybe use this little brush that we've been sketching with. Tonight, it's pretty small. It's a uh, Dick Blick number three. It's a bristle brush. I don't know. I have a lot of brushes, so I think that's what we'll use. I got things blocked on my phone. I'm glad I just saw potential spam. Gosh, it's just crazy these days, these calls. All right, so let's start. I could start any place I wanted. I could start with the leaves or, or the persimmons, whatever we want. It looks like the little top on them um, is also, it's green. Again, any way I wanted to do this, I could block in the background. I think I'm gonna, okay, we're gonna start with the green guys. And we'll start with the darkest part of them. Let's make sure I'm getting dark enough. I'm going to, again, I'm going to squint a lot here. Now we'll look for the darkest part. I have to get a little solvent in that so it moves. I'm just working on these two green ones right now. I think I'm going to put a little alizarin in that and warm it up a little bit. That's pretty, uh, cool. All right, and then we'll jump over to this one. Did you ever paint persimmons? I, like I said, I don't think I ever had the opportunity. lighter green. I'm going to put a little more yellow in there. Darks are not actually the the top. We do have to put the little top in. This one's kind of laying on its side a little bit. I'm going to try to. I'm going to kind of ignore those stems for now. Went and look at this third one here. The darkest part on this one is kind of across the center there. And as you can see, I did orange on my board. I, I don't know, I thought that might work well. You know, we'll try to leave some of it poking through. 
and I'm putting orange on it now so I realize it's difficult to see what I'm doing. That's our lighter mixture. Yeah, we're not going to go after the little top yet. We'll wait till we, I think, get everything blocked in. Like I said, this stem goes across there. It's attached underneath there. And this one, well, we might have to move that over because this, yeah, wait a minute, we got, a, we got a problem here. We might have to move one or the other over because they're both attached to this stem. Now what would work better? I actually think I want to move that one, let me think, let me think. If that one runs across there. Then that one's got to come over. Yeah, they're both on the same stem. So, so that one's got to come over. We can do that. All right. See, I didn't consider that. to really see much of this one. We probably won't till we get much further along because we're painting kind of orange on orange. Yeah, hard to see anything in it. All right, let's move on and we'll block in um, I think we'll block in the green leaves. Let me see what I've got here. Okay, this is coming out, and this is the leaf. And there is a shadow off to the side. This shadow kind of is elongated. soaked into the board there. Kind of wipe it back. Okay. And this one is here. Oh, that's an elongated shape from this one. And then there's our leaf. Actually, it's kind of one shadow. Leaves out a little further. Okay, so let's work on our leaves. I'm going to go with a bigger brush. And we'll work with that really dark dark that we mixed up, which is ultramarine and Indian yellow. All right, let's look for the darkest part of these. It's very, this one's very dark right in here, and I think some of that might be because it's block. Okay, now let me sure get sure I'm getting things where they belong. It's tricky painting from life, I'm not going to lie, because if this was in a photograph, you know, this stuff would not move. You know, it would be definitely easier. So why don't I do that, right? I just don't much. I don't know. I like working from life. I'm looking where.
where this dark part of this leaf is in relation to these fruits and how much of it is actually dark just a bit and then it gets lighter and then we're doing this leaf here okay I'm going to make a change here get rid of something that I'm not seeing my scissors back out and we'll, we're going to look for these shadows again really good for when we get to paint in the background okay are perfectly shaped. They've probably been through a lot, right? It's the end of the season. I did see a tree today turning orange. So fall's a-coming. are attached to it. We're definitely going to have to get more color in that one that's, you know, here because it's probably going to be our focal point. Maybe. I mean, maybe it won't feel right to be a different color. Maybe in the end it will have to be the same. Right, let's mix up some background color and we'll do our shadows first. So we got a shadow of the stem. Okay. I'm going to run that shadow off. probably, you know, I'm getting shadows from the ceiling and shadows from my light. Yeah, I've got real elongated shadows for some reason.
Not really seeing a shadow from this little guy. I suspect it's uh, projecting on that leaf right there, probably. So I'm making a gray. I'm going to use some of these colors that are on my palette. Because why not? Mix some of this orange color, some of the green with some white. You know, rather than waste the paint if you're going for a gray, just uh, use what you got. All right. So I'm looking real careful here. to be like 92 tomorrow and then the next day like high of 66 so <laughs> it's gonna turn into fall overnight once I get this black back uh, blocked in then we're going to come look at these again and uh, see what we need to do to everything Jumping around in it. Sorry about that. I'm going to want to put the end of that stem in. I lost it. the end of that so we'll put that back Ooh, that is really intensely blue I didn't mean to do that I 
it's odd. Shadows don't always do what you think they're going to. You know, and I don't see this shadow here, so I'm going to take it out. I just felt like it should be there, but now that I'm seeing it there, I don't think so. Let's look at the top of one of these guys, see what they were made like. I actually pulled the other one out of the water tube so we could look at it. See how they grow on the stem like that? They look like just little shriveled leaves, don't they? Little. Very dark, mostly. And that's what obviously holds it on to the stem. I've ever eaten a persimmon. They're edible, right? The ones that were falling off the tree were, were this size and uh, not in very good shape. Put a little detail in there, see how we feel about that. thinking this feels, they're little round balls, so I'm thinking that feels a little large. up an orange and I'm lightening it up. For the top of this one.
The two green ones I see a little highlight on, but I don't see it on the peachy colored one. Maybe just there's a little highlight here. And that one's here. Let me squint and look and look for it. On the peachy one, I don't really see it. I don't know why. I want to suggest a little bit of it. So they all have a little bit of that reflected light. Some really dark to kind of see if we need to kind of ground some of them. I said this one for. Again, I think the shadows cast it on this leaf. And this I know feels the larger, and I think it does feel larger. Let me think about that. It's laying kind of on its side where the others are. enlarge that one a little bit. So what do they feel like? I don't actually know. Do they feel like persimmons? I don't know. That one I told you I painted with the uh, grapefruit and kumquats, I think they were. Anyway, it didn't matter. The lady's like, what are they? And I couldn't remember kumquats at the time, but it didn't matter. You know, either you like it or you don't, right? So slick, I can't get that to it here. Let's do it this way. going on with the branches. One thing I think I'm 
not lichen maybe that's the way this shadow goes into this fruit I'm actually wondering if this should be over a bit more of what it does as I look down there it kind of comes into the shadow not into the fruit so let's get rid of this it's getting dark early these days I don't know how I feel about that I don't think I got anything to say about it though do you It's kind of odd, isn't it? But that's kind of that's what I see. I see this shadow coming up into this shadow, and yeah. So that's the shadow of the leaf. That's that shadow. This shadow is casted there, and that one's there. don't hate it. Um, kind of like the composition and I think the shadows give it something else. Um, trying to see if there's anything we can do to make it better. leaf and edge. <laughs> Did you make it better? No. Um not intentionally, but I kind of opened up this. But I don't think it matters because it fills the canvas a bit better. I go here. Oh, you even got a little thing on the bottom. That's weird, isn't it? I was kind of seeing that. I don't know, the brush is too big. Go. Maybe we'll do it with a palette knife. Oh, no, that scratched into it. That didn't work. Hmm. That is not going to work. I 
right, that took about 45 minutes. It's a five by seven again. Um, like and subscribe if you haven't done that, please. We'll get outside again soon. Um, tomorrow's gonna be really hot, then it's gonna cool off. So maybe the next day. All right, thank you for joining me. Um, it's kind of a cute little painting, don't you think? And as far as signing it, I probably will keep it over here because I have more room over here. And when you do sign, make sure you keep it up high enough that it doesn't get down in your frame. You know, be proud of it and keep it high enough. So, and you can, when you have a tone like this, I could scratch it in. But I usually use a tiny little brush and sign it. I have an easy name, <laughs> unlike a lot of people. All right, thanks again. Thanks for taking time out of your day. Catch you next time.